Hey, it's Steve and Minaj live from Singapore. We've been kind of busy lately and uh, London, Singapore, we're off to Sweden next. Um, what we want to do is get up with you. We haven't done a video in a while. We heard some exciting news lately, right, from, yeah. uh, from the Mac world. So we want to discuss it and that is uh, decrypting T2 chipset Mac so that you can do physical imaging so that you can acquire local snapshots and extended metadata. So that's a quite a lot of stuff right there. And a lot of you might be concerned or even confused about what is all this stuff and why is it important. So we wanted to kind of break that down for you and, and make it simpler. So first of all, let's just really quickly talk about what is, what is a T2 chipset Mac? What is the purpose of a T2 chipset on the Mac? Okay, um, the purpose of a T2 chip on a Mac is to provide an extra layer of uh, security. Uh, it secures the hardware and the software, like both hardware and software of a Mac. So what does it do to data? What does it actually do in regards to data on the disk? Uh, on the machines, uh, on the Mac machine with the T2 chipset, the data in its storage on the SSD, it is always encrypted. Always encrypted. So basically, um, that would prevent someone from actually removing the hard disk mm -hmm. or actually um, trying to do something similar to like a chip off, right, to access the data. Yes, uh, doing chip off uh, from a uh, Mac machine and reading the data from its storage uh, won't provide any uh, meaningful data. All right, so that's what the, one of the purposes of the T2 chipset is protect data at rest, correct? Yes, yes, protect the data at the rest. All right, cool. Now, with the T2 chipset, it introduced something else mm -hmm. that's been bothering examiners, making it a little bit more different, and that's security. You want yes. to explain that? Yes, uh, with the T2 chipset, uh, Mac have introduced uh, extra layer of security, so it's not uh, possible to boot a Mac, uh, T2 chip based Mac with external media and unsigned operating system without the admin password. So if you want to boot a Mac, a T2 chip based Mac with external media and with unsigned operating system, you need to have admin password to disable the security and then boot it. So, so really simply, if you want to boot something, you know, a Mac with some sort of external device, no matter what it is, you have to have the password in order to disable those settings. Yes, exactly. And that's not always possible. Yes. So what solution did we come up in the current version of Recon Imager through uh, target disk mode? Okay. Uh, what, what can be done is uh, we can uh, boot a T2G based Mac with the target disk mode. We boot another machine uh, with Recon Imager and we connect them and then image the data of T2G based Mac machine. So just to confirm, boot another Mac with the T2 um, Boot the Mac with a T2 chipset into target disk mode, connect it to another Mac, another. running recon engine, yes. right? Okay, and then you're able to acquire the data how? Uh, logically? Logically. Or, uh, logically, logically, logically. Yeah. All right, so now, that's one point that we want to cover. So right now, with the current uh, imagers that are on the market, if you have a T2 chipset Mac, you're basically pulling the data logically through target disk mode to get to the data. Now, we want to talk about one more thing here. That's extended attributes. So just explain to me really quickly what's extended attributes in the Mac. So extended attributes are uh, you know uh, add-on attributes which Mac stores uh, regarding your file. So for example, if you, uh, I download a file on my Mac, so the web link from where I downloaded the file it will be stored as an extended attribute. Okay, so currently taking the information through target disk mode from a T2 chipset map, mm -hmm. right, logically, mm -hmm. it's not getting all the extended attributes, correct? Or is it? No, it is getting all the extended attributes. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's something that is a little misleading. All right, so now, the developments that we heard recently mm -hmm. was talking about decrypting or getting the T2 chipset to decrypt the physical disk, right, or logical disk, mm -hmm. um, so that it can be imaged, um, decrypted to access all this data, extended attributes, and these local snapshots. Let's talk really quickly about what, what exactly exists on disk. So, um, from what I know, basically, if it's an Apple installed SSD, mm -hmm. from 10.7 going forward, trim's been turned on. So, can you explain what trimming is in a Mac on mm -hmm. SSDs? Okay, in SSD, there is a, uh, uh, in programming, I'll call it a trim. So, trim is a command which uh, clears the uh, data blocks which are not required by the file system. For example, if uh, on Mac we delete a file, as soon as the file is deleted, 
Mac will run train on that SSD and the data on the blocks which were uh, taken by that particular file, they, uh, they, they will be cleared and uh, you cannot record them. So for those of you guys that just like zoned out with all that technical talk, a simple explanation would be this, right? If you delete a file from a Mac and it has an Apple installed SSD mm -hmm. and trim is turned on, the data is gone, right? The memory yes. cells are cleared, it's white. Yes. Oh, yes, so is it possible to get deleted data, APFS or otherwise, from uh, a solid state disk where, the, where some files have been deleted and trims turned on? Is it possible? Yes, it is, it is possible. Uh, that maybe uh, those files are present in the snapshot. Oh, Local okay. Snapshots. So what you're saying is like if somebody deletes a file, the file is gone. Right, the file is gone. Mm -hmm. So any hope of getting something that was previously deleted from a, from a, an Apple disk would only exist in backup files. So technically, it's not deleted. It's just sitting in a backup. Yes, file. yes, it's there uh, in the file system, but uh, at a different state. So it's uh, maybe sitting in some snapshot. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. That's what all this news has been about. How do you access those snapshots? So that's what we're we're trying to figure out. So one method that's mm -hmm. been proposed already and, and at least uh, we've been given a little bit of news about is to decrypt it or trick the T2 chipset into mm -hmm. giving up the data mm -hmm. um, decrypted and, and then accessing the, the snapshots that way. But we have a different method of doing it, correct? Right. All right, so let's discuss these two methods. So one method, what I understand is decrypting or tricking the Mac into decrypting it, mm -hmm. um, giving you stuff so you can access it, or we can do it a different way, right? Yes, we can do it in a different way. Uh, as you know, snapshots are built into the Mac. Mac itself is providing you the, uh, you know, uh, interfaces to access those snapshots. So essentially, what you're saying is, with our new version of Recon Imager that's coming out like mm -hmm. this week. Yes. So basically, we're going to just let the Mac be the Mac. Yes. Like let it just be itself and do what it does. Yes. Uh, so Recon Imager will be using Mac itself to read Mac's data. So we are not doing any reverse engineering. Oh, no reverse engineering and no security issues, no hacking, no nothing. Yes, and uh, our results are re uh, verifiable, so you can uh, verify them any number of times. So that's also an important concept that you brought up, which is verification, right? Which is what makes something a forensic tool, right? Yes. So in order for um, an imaging tool to be totally mm -hmm. forensic, mm -hmm. you must be able to hash the source yes. and hash the output, right? Exactly. So is that possible with what we're doing for getting the snapshots, mm -hmm. getting extended attributes, mm -hmm. and, and imaging it our way? Is, is that happening? Yeah, this is happening. Oh, this is happening. Oh, okay. Uh, with uh, Recon Imager, we are actually both the source uh, and uh, the output. Now, from what I understand, there's going to be a difference between imaging physically and, and imaging the way that we're doing, which is still logically, it's not, not physically. Mm -hmm. Are we losing any data? Are we losing anything? No, no. Uh, we are getting the extended attributes, we are getting the files, the deleted files or the modified files from the snapshots. Uh, but if a file is permanently deleted on Mac, uh, on SSD, so data is gone, so we are not missing anything. No, I'm missing anything. Now, now let's talk about um, the, the size of the image or the data that's collected to your, your, your collection drive. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between trying to decrypt the blocks physically mm -hmm. versus doing it the way that we are, Okay, the, the, the native way? Okay, uh, I can explain you the way we are doing is uh, for, just think of a, a Mac with T2 chip and uh, storage 1 TB in size. Uh, let's say uh, one out of 1 TB, 200 GB of data is taken by the file system and some like 20 or like maybe 30 GB of data uh, space taken by the uh, local snapshot. So we are imaging around 130 uh, GB of data. So if we're doing it our way, which is getting all the data, which is getting all the stuff from the local snapshot, which is getting all the extended attributes, mm -hmm. would only take up about 120, 130 gigabytes of space, yes. you know, hypothetically here, mm -hmm. if it was like a one terabyte drive, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, so we would not have to image the entire one terabyte. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. wow, that makes sense. Hmm. Well, that's pretty darn cool. So now, with the new release of, of Recon Imager version 4, mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about a couple of new features in there, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things is when it comes to doing snapshots, how do you know if a snapshot exists on, on it? Are we doing something about that or, or how do we even know that we have to care about this? Okay, uh, with the Recon Imager uh, new, new, uh, new version, 
when we try to image uh, like APFS volume, the corn imager will provide us a list of all the snapshots. So then, so then we can just choose, right? Yes, we can choose the snapshot and image it. So we can actually know, we're actually doing some triaging up front to determine what snapshots are there, and if you can pick and choose which ones you want, yes, you can yeah. get one, two, or one, all. One, two, or all. Great, wonderful, right? Awesome. Now, so there's another thing that we're doing that's really special with Recon mm -hmm. Imager, which is doing some of the analysis during the time of imaging as opposed to having to do it later, right? Yes. So, want to talk about what that is real quick? Yes, uh, with the Recon Imager Senior version, what we are doing is uh, we are analyzing the snapshot with the current state of the APFS uh, file system and then uh, we are creating the difference between them. Uh, and sending the output to a folder or uh, to a uh, image format, which is uh, you know uh, readable by all the different forensic tools. Wait, 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 wait! What did you just say? So what you just said is the way that we're doing with the analysis up front in our tool mm -hmm. allows you to output local snapshots that can be used in any forensics tool. Yes, any wait, forensic wait, wait. tool. Don't we want to make it our forensics tool, or do we want to share it with the world? Ah, uh, it, it's for the world. It's not ah. for us. It's for well, the world. But we can make so much money if we do it the other way. Don't you want to make a lot of money? How much money do you need? Uh, just to get some products, right? <laughs> yeah. Like today. Yeah, just brought us some right. chai. So yeah, so this is an important concept too. The way that we're actually outputting this data from local snapshot means if you want to, like we always encourage you to use a Mac to do a Mac, but if you want to go ahead and put this in the Windows Forensics tool that you can. Oh, wait a minute, we forgot to talk about the price. Wait, wait are, are we going to raise the price on this or what? No, it's same. But it's not. It's going all the same. Okay, Manaj says it's the same, so the it's price same. is going to be the same. So what we'd like to do for you now is actually, uh, we're going to go back inside. We've been outside this lovely weather in Singapore. Uh, go back inside. We're actually going to run you through a quick demonstration of this. Um, and this is going to be out this week. So by the time you get this video, count three, four, five days, this is going to be out. So uh, we'll meet you on the inside. Back inside now, and uh, we're taking a look at the new Recon Imager Pro uh, version 4. Um, this is one of our beta versions. Uh, again, still in development, but it should be finalized by this week. Uh, what you're seeing here is us looking at a Mac, um, and we're looking at the APFS volume where the user data is stored. Uh, this could be a Mac that's um, been booted with Secure Boot turned off um, by knowing the admin password, or you can still do it the old-fashioned way by connecting it to another device with uh, target disk mode. Um, what we have here is the image type, and what we're selecting here is logical folder. Um, by doing so, we can have an output that you can put into any forensics tool. So you're not locked into a single forensics tool, a single solution. Um, we're, we're opening it up for everyone um, because that just seems to be the right thing to do. Um, right here, what we're going to do is select process snapshots. And again, to make it a true forensics tool, you have to be able to hash the source and then also the output. So make sure when you're looking at solutions, you check to see if the source can be hashed. Um, what you're seeing here also is our destination drive. We're going to go ahead and give it a quick name here. And then all we have to do is click start. And what you're seeing Recon Imager doing, it's a very intuitive tool. It's, it's doing some advanced scanning here to determine if APF snapshots even exist on the system. And we do. We can see the different snapshots here. I'm just going to pick one of them just for the heck of it. Um, or you can select all of them. It doesn't matter. Select whatever you want. I'm going to say use selected um, snapshots. What's happening now is it's going to analyze the snapshots here on the system itself um, to determine um, what has changed, like what is in the snapshots, right? We want to save as much space for you as possible on your collection media. Um, this is also gives you the ability to um, allow other users, you, you know, of different forensics tools to, to gather this data instead of being locked into one solution. Um, I'm, I'm all about everybody wanting to spend money with us, but in reality, our, our mission, as it's always been, is to help the forensic community um, in the best way that we can. Uh, we come from law enforcement, so um, that's, that's where our heart is, you know, keep low-cost tools, um, good solutions, um, give you everything you can. We, we totally support um, having as many tools as you can get and using the best features of each. So we're not, again, trying to lock you into one solution. Um, so right now, it's still going through the analysis, and what you'll see here in a second is it'll actually begin the imaging. So again, where it is, details are going. You can see it recovering deleted files, uh, modified files. Everything is happening 
on like at the time of imaging at the time of imaging um here so again uh, shortly it'll begin doing the imaging of the, the actual volume and everything's good you're getting everything you're you're not missing anything you're not missing files you're not missing data um, because you're not doing it physically you're getting the local snapshots you're actually processing them ahead of time you're not locked into a solution and oh by the way did I mention that um, our tools are very uh, low cost all right so if you have any questions you know where to find us smore.com hello at smore.com give us a call um, ping us um, let us know how we can help Take care.